Okay, continue where we left off. So, yeah, we're still on Hercules versus Jafar. And, yeah, the deal was... You know, Jafar is just striking Hercules a deal. To what he would give up. His demigod strength or Meg. And which one would it be? Of course, he's going to choose to give up his demigod strength. Freeze Meg. And guess Jafar's the winner. And now for the next fight is the uh, the forces of Bambi. Yeah, it's the forces of Bambi versus the forces of Corella. So Corella, Medusa, and Clayton, along with Jasper and Horus, arrive at the forest. They're doing some hunting. Until all of Bambi's forces have spotted them. No need to there's hunters. Yeah, I'm just gonna say something that's gonna sound weird. I'm, I would call it like the Disney equivalent of open season. I don't know why, because it's basically like the animals fighting against hunters. It's just what I'm getting at. Except it has like two gators and wolves fighting alongside the hunters. Uh, right in the rabbit's foot. Even though Open Season was just a weird movie, it's not that good. It's just kind of weird seeing <laughs> how Bug would just... You know, using that fantasy sequence, but also in his... What he's doing in reality, just fighting the bad guys. Huh. They captured the cows and Buck. Kenai just protecting Coda by putting them in somewhere safe. And I may have to tie him up. Hold on, Bambi's gonna do his jump. Spotted by Clayton and bang! Oh! Clayton shot Bambi. They're all in shock. Oh dear. And now for the next one is the intense cutscene. I think that's literally what it's called down there. Intense cutscene. So yeah, it'd be intense. So Hades forces the spring sprite to free the firebird. Oh boy. I remember as a little little kid when I used to watch Fantasia 2000, that firebird used to scare me. That was probably the reason why I used to be kind of afraid of fire. Oh. Hold on. His favorite? Part of the game. Interesting change of music. Death. Ish. So yeah, all of hell is now going to be breaking loose. Well, look, some animals are setting dangers coming. Danger than the hunters. Well, at least he's out of that tree. Yeah, good luck trying to plug the holes up from the lava. Because they're not going to question why the animals are just hiding, or maybe they're just assuming that it's because of them. Uh, now he's getting face to face with Bambi, who is still wounded. Oh, did he say something? Oh dear. And the Firebird has awakened. 
Looks like everyone sees him rising from the mountain. And now everyone's just running away! It's like, forget this. Tell me what he's thinking. Oh boy. Okay, the piece of fire just got onto his peg leg. It was went from silly to now intense. And now trying to get away from the fire. I do like this music though, it gives me intenseness. I just don't want to put the unmute on because, you know, make the sound go on because I don't want to get copyright clean just in case, just to be safe. And it's interesting using the Firebird's fire as the fire from Bambi, even though it's from a campfire that caused the whole forest fire. It just makes it a lot intense. It looks like Corella and her forces are getting out of here. And it looks like someone's trying to... Yep, the great prince of the forest is here to help Bambi out. And we get this from the scene from the movie. Yep, he's getting up. He's gonna go with the great prince of the forest. Well, the Hades is watching this whole thing. And of course, these two jump. Everything's on fire, the whole forest. Oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> Just all of nature lovers and hippies and environmentalers, uh, just anyone that's like all about protecting the environment would probably be upset about this whole thing. You know, the whole forest on fire because of the firebird. Okay, now for the epilogue, we see the Hades introduces or gives the... Oh, yeah, brings the firebird to Chernobog and Maleficent as their plan is moving along. Well, I would say Chernobog would be here. I think that's just his spiritual essence. And then we get, well, the Blue Fairy, giving the letter to Pinocchio and Jiminy, tells them that Geppetto was looking for him and he was swallowed by a whale. You ain't get the whole thing. And, of course, he's going to go out and save him. I mean, if you've seen Pinocchio, you'll probably get the whole thing. I guess in this war, it's this time, Geppetto is the only one swallowed by Monstro. Since Figaro and Cleo are with the team dogs and cats. I would question the mice would probably use a wheelbarrow to bring Cleo with them. It's just my guess. Either that or Dumbo is carrying in that fishbowl with his trunk. And then we see that uh, Yang Sha... And Poe and Yao and Jasmine, Pooh Bear and friends, and yeah, Jasmine have finally got to join forces with you know the main Disney Hero Alliance that's now currently being led by Hercules, who lost his demigod strength. That they tell him, and they tell him that Aladdin is gone, much to her shock. Yeah, her boyfriend is missing. And then we see at the circus, we see Lilo and Stitch sneaking around, see if they're, if they're trying to free the kids, and yeah, the way he does that, hi, weird, and I would like to think that it's, after he says hi, everyone just, you know, John and the, Michael and the Lost Boys just look at their reactions, there's Stitch, like, what, what the F is that? Like, they're not even concerned now that they're still being captured, they're just wondering, what the if you know the F word, you probably get it. 
Can everyone agree with me that this is probably what their reaction actually is after, like, what the heck is Stitch? So, yeah, they're trying to free the kids. But... Looks like they don't have enough time as Saroosh shows up. Lilo promises to come back for them. And then we see that Ratcliffe and McLeach have decided to merge their forces. Oh dear. Then we see Simba and now with all the lionesses have returned, now he'll have enough army to take down Tarzan. Then we see Mowgli, Timon, and Pumbaa decide to team up just to stop Simba and Tarzan's rivalry. And then we see each of the characters, well, uh, how to go again? So Milo, Ariel, and the others who survived the underwater, undersea battle decide to keep contact with one another. Hmm. Oh, wait. There you go. So yeah, they're gonna split up, but hopefully they'll find a way to keep contact. And then we see Team Human again, have bumped into, hold on, Rafiki, who promised them that, tells them how to, how to go again, tells them of a way they can be human again. Huh, so he knows the way. Do you know the way? It's a dead meme of a Uganda knuckle. So yeah, they're not happy. They're not letting this happen. And then we see Frollo is... What I consider is actually a really... That's about time he's out of this one. Like, he has enough of being teamed up with the villains, even Maleficent. And he's wanting to condemn her to hell. But yeah, the crow, or the raven, Diablo, watches this says, and he's like, Well, now this should be interesting. So now we're getting a rivalry between Frollo and Maleficent. Frollo wanting out of there, make his own forces, just so he can take down the mistress of all evil, even the heroes. That's what I consider to be the best idea ever. I'm just saying. And it's about time Frollo is just has enough of teaming up with these guys. You know, a bunch of crazy supervillains. Yeah, I guess even after the... Yeah, even though non-Disney heroes versus villains is still, you know, being worked on, even though Round 7 Part 1 was just remade by Fattis. I wonder if she is going to do the idea, like, well, basically Oliver Cromwell being a rival to Mock. I'm just saying. Something similar, but not a whole copy thing, but it's just something that makes sense for the characters. Although I would... Maybe I should have picked the idea of the... And just don't want to make too much talk and I don't have enough time. So that was Disney Heroes vs. Villains Round 10 Part 2. And it was a really good one. So, yeah, see you guys in the next uh, video.